Hey guys, hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to another video here on the RC Explain channel. In this particular video, we're gonna take a look at exactly what went wrong with this particular radio control airplane. Now with this radio control airplane, what happened was I was just on the water, it's a float plane, and I was ready to take off. Now I got lucky in a few different ways here. As soon as I was going to take off, the motor made a funny noise, and then immediately after I cut the power to the plane with the throttle on my transmitter there was a good size flame shooting right out from the bottom of this airplane so let's go ahead and figure out what happened now typically the motor is installed right on the front of this airplane like so but i have removed the motor and the speed control and the battery and the battery compartment completely from this plane and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video very shortly so let's get started and take a look at those couple components of this plane in order to identify exactly what happened. All right guys, so let's take a look at the electronic speed control as well as our motor and identify where some potential issues could arise from. Now, if you're wondering why I'm wearing these gloves, electronic components, when they have burned up, absolutely reek they stink so bad that they stay in components for literally months and months and months i have one radio control boat that has never actually got that smell removed from the hull and it's been almost a decade. So this kind of odor seems to stay in certain materials forever and I certainly don't want that on my hand. So just a, you know, a small pro tip, whenever you're dealing with these components, probably a good idea just to wear gloves so you don't get any of that on your hands. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at our electronic speed control. Now, ultimately what I'm gonna do here is I wanna pop things off and see if there's anything that I can learn. Most of the information is going to come from our motor because our speed control is completely obliterated. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off these plastic caps here. So I'm going to pop off this, this plastic cap here and then take a look at the capacitors. Now it looks like one has been um, just reefed on because I know when I tried to get this out I was trying to pull and tug on this thing quite significantly. These caps actually look like they're in decent condition and does not seem to be a source of a failure. And all I'm trying to do with this speed control is find an opportunity where I might learn something. So let's take a look at the other side. Okay, so this is where we start to get some information here. As you can notice that all of my power leads from the battery, these both have been almost desoldered right from the board. And because of that, I know there's been some significant amount of current going through from the battery pack to the speed control in order to create enough heat to remove these from the board. And that's on the both sides for power. And then when I go to the other side, I'm able to identify that the motor leads, two of them still seem like they're soldered pretty tightly to the board, uh, but there is that third one, and it looks like there's been quite a bit of power that came through on this last FET, and because of that, there might be an issue with the motor. So this is definitely something that is going to force me to take a look at that motor, see if there's any issues surrounding that. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull this thing out or not. We'll give it a tug and see if it comes out. Okay, so it looks like it's okay. It's gonna come out. So now that we have the board removed, we could just take a look at the speed control and in general, just to look at all the damage. I mean, there's not much here that we'd be able to identify, um, you know, unless you really know what you're looking for in a particular build for a speed control. It does look like that it is one phase that has been damaged more significantly than the others. But outside of that, uh, there doesn't seem to be any other damage. Now, what's interesting to know is that as soon as your power leads have been disconnected from your speed control, it's a guaranteed that you're going to lose all power to the airplane. So it's a really good thing that I had not taken off or been in the air in any sort of way because if that were to be the case there would be no airplane today it would have hundred percent crashed due to complete power loss on board so just another one of those lucky things that happened in my case I think that's pretty well all the information that we can learn about the speed control the things that we've identified is definitely power has been significant on the input power side and it looks like that one phase has been significantly damaged all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the motor this is where we're gonna learn pretty well everything about what happened within this power system. So the first thing that I'm doing with it is I'm just taking a look at the, you know anything that I can see 
on the motor in terms of the windings and what color they are and if they look like they're all there. Just making some very quick first initial observations about anything obvious that I'm able to see. I'm rotating the motor. It seems like everything in terms of rotation feels okay. I don't feel anything abnormal when I'm rotating the can of this motor. Taking a look at the back, I do see some areas within this surrounding area that has been a little bit burnt. That could be because of the speed control and the relative position of where this motor was when it did go up in flames. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to actually check all of the coils on this motor. I want to check every single phase and make sure that we're still getting the same KV rating for each one of those phases. So really what I should see is equal voltage across all phases. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw those voltages into a, some software there on the Radio Control Info website in order to determine what the KV is when we go and actually measure it. We're trying to get somewhere around 525 as this thing has been labeled. So let's go ahead, do that. We'll first connect all this up and then we'll find out what kind of voltage we're getting Okay, so we're all hooked up. We got our motor connected to our multimeter. In this case, we're initially going to be measuring our AC voltage produced by the motor. Now, initially what I have connected here is the black and the red wire. Now there are three wires within our Brazos motor, which tells us that there's three phases. This is something that we will have to measure for each phase, the voltage. It is absolutely mandatory to go through that process because we want to find a particular failure within any one of those phases. So the first thing that we're going to do is measure the voltage here on the black and red wire. And ultimately what we're hoping for is the same voltage across all three phases. So let's go ahead and spin our motor up with our first phase being measured. So it looks like we're getting about 2.05 volts. So we'll simply go and swap one of the wires over to another wire and we'll do the exact same thing. Two point zero eight. So we'll go back to that initial one just to make sure. Two point oh six and then we're going to go ahead and do our last phase, which is going from red to the blue wire here. So we essentially measured anywhere from 2.05 to about the 2.08 volt mark. I don't see anything here that is particularly obvious within our brushless motor. Everything seems to be within a small close tolerance. I would expect to see a much greater difference if there was a true issue. Next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the exact same step. I'm gonna just switch it over to frequency just to make sure that during the second test, there's no issue there. So now we're gonna go and switch it over to the frequency, which I've set right here. And this is gonna measure in Hertz, the amount of RPM that we're actually spinning. All we need to know is the amount of brushless poles within the magnet or rotor of this motor, and we can convert that to RPM. So let's go ahead, fire it up. We're using the red and blue wire for this initial run up. Looks like we got about 166 hertz. 166 hertz. We're going to go and switch some wires around here. Measure again. 166 hertz. And we're going to check our last remaining phase here. and we got 166 hertz. That essentially shows us that we're getting some similar values across each one of those phases. There's nothing that is all that alarming. If we wanna take it a step further, we're gonna to start to open up that motor. So let's go ahead and take it to that step and start to open up the motor just to see if we have anything going on there as well. First things first, we're just gonna unfasten all of the fasteners here on the back mounting plate. I'm gonna remove this just to make it easier may not actually be necessary, but that's okay. It's not gonna take too long to take these guys off. So now that we have our plate off, we can remove the rotor of the motor. It looks like all we need to do is take off this split ring, and then we can remove these couple 
uh, set screws and then this rotor should be able to pull right out. So let's start off with our set screws and then go from there. Okay, after a little bit of fighting with this guy, I finally got him pulled off. It would help if I had the right tool. Uh, but I don't. And the last thing that I did to remove the motor here is to just punch this shaft right out from the core of this motor. So here we can see the stator of the motor and then here we can see the rotor of the motor where the rotor contains all of our magnets and then the stator contains all of the windings. This is where we can essentially provide our final check just to make sure that there's no issue or concerns that we see that are very obvious. So what I'm looking for here is a nice twist of wire around all of the edges that I see them coming right from those leads. And then I can see nice good color of copper windings around here. Nothing is burnt that I'm able to see, which tells me that it didn't necessarily get hot in these areas. I don't see any of those issues. And then I want to inspect the magnets. I wanna make sure that they're all properly seated. There's not a magnet that is uh, poking out or loose. This is very important because if there was a loose magnet, this can start to interfere with the stator. And if it start to interfere with the stator, you'd have some significant lockage or mechanical damage that can occur that can draw and consume a lot of current within the ESC in order to get it fired up. And because the motor never spun at all, we know that that is a potential. However, we don't see any evidence of that within this motor. So right now at this point, I don't see any issue with the motor. I don't see any issue with the magnets or the stator. I would essentially clear this motor of any issue and now we can go and fire it up to see if it in fact still spins. And there, what I wanna do, even so, even if I'm this confident that the motor's going to be okay, I'm always going to use a speed control that is one that I don't put in planes. It's just a test speed control that I've used on our radio control dyno to measure the power, mechanical and electrical of our motor. And then if that were to burn out on me because of something that I didn't catch, that's okay. And then I would know that I have a certain issue. Yeah, so the real last step here is to go and fire up that motor to see if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this motor and then we'll try and fire it up. All right, here's, so here's the test. We're gonna plug in the battery pack to this system. It's gonna arm. All right, so now we're gonna raise the throttle and this is essentially checking that the motor's okay. So now right away, I already heard those beeps and they sounded very clean and normal. So I'm expecting some good things here. So let's raise our throttle. Kicks in, sounds perfect. Motor spinning. There's wide open throttle and that's wide open throttle only on 2S LiPo. So that looks fine. Everything's fine there. So there you have it, there's the answer. Motor is okay, speed control ended up failing and that needs to be replaced. Well guys, it pretty well sums it up for this video. The only thing left to do is replace and assemble a bunch of components to get this plane back in the air. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.